we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to talk about ministry flow, spontaneous flow of ministry. Your pastor or um, a ministry has invited you to minister on a platform, okay? And you're going to minister to a crowd, you're going to minister to a congregation, you got a window on Sunday morning, or you got a Wednesday night window, or uh, there's a tent crusade and you got thrown into this whole thing and you're going to be ministering. Um, you get to share your testimony, get to something. Okay. And you're like, okay, um, this is like, you know, if you minister in a supernatural context at all, you're like, what do I do? Those people, they kind of like flow in the prophetic, they flow in healing, they flow in deliverance. It just kind of looks like kind of natural for them. And I cannot do that. Well, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you know how to do this. All right. There is a way to do this. And so, um, uh, first of all, you know, I, I know there is a flow to it. So we're, we are going to wait for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We're going to wait for timing. But you're up, okay? And, you, and I don't know about you, but I know that every single time that I minister, the Holy Spirit wants to do miracles. I know that. I absolutely know that. I expect this to happen. And so because I expect it to happen, you know, I, I need to know how to do it smoothly, all right? So I've just said my testimony or I've shared a scripture or something and and, um, you know, I just, I really sense the Holy Spirit wants to release healing uh, in the crowd, congregation. He wants to do some supernatural, um, you know, healing. Okay, so how does that work? How does that look natural, but it's supernatural, okay? How do I do this in a way that it flows and I can step into it and I can step out of it. All right. So, so here's a couple things you're going to, you're going to laugh. I'm going to give you some points. Now get a pen, uh, write these down. Okay. Or you can come back to this video and you can check it out later, but let's say it's healing. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one of seven things. Okay. One of seven things. And you might come up with some more after you hear this. But the first thing I might do is I might just do a general invitation to the entire room. If you need healing, okay, um, uh, I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm going to pray for the entire room right now. And I'm going to release the healing anointing over you in Jesus' name. And if that's you, just receive it right where you're at. And I'm going to say something like that. Real simple, right? And I'm going to do that. In the name of Jesus, I just release the, the healing anointing over every person in this, in this uh, room, uh, out on this lawn, underneath this tent, wherever I happen to be. I, I, I release the healing anointing over you in the name of Jesus. Okay? And you have to believe that when you say that and you speak that to the Holy Spirit, he's going to back you up and he's going to begin to heal people right where they at. So that's, that's what I call the general invitation. Then we have the specific invitation if anybody in this room is having uh, something something's happening with your uh with with your stomach that you you're dealing with a stomach pain there's like an ulcer or something's not not working right in your digestive system i just release the healing anointing upon you right now and i just command that digestive issue to be whole and healed in the name of jesus so that's a specific invitation you don't have to have anybody raise their hands you don't have to say anything uh you know any, anything more than that okay and the people who get healed will come talk to you after the service or after after the um you know the event's over and they'll let you know what god did okay another one um, if, if you, if again, we're flowing and healing, so we call it spontaneous flow, but there's some ways that you can administer this. Okay. What you can do is you can actually in general to say, if you need healing, if God, if you need your body to be healed, I want you to just raise your hand right where you're at, raise your hand from your seat and just, just wave it at me. Okay. Just raise your hand so I can see you. Okay. And that, that's all you do. And then you just do it again. You just release the healing power of God in the name of Jesus over every person who just raised their hand. And then you just you just trust that the Holy Spirit is actually uh, uh, backing up what you are saying. Uh, so you can have them raise their hand from the seat. You can have them actually come to the front and pray for them while uh, while you're standing, let's say on a platform, and they're just standing maybe out in front of you. In the kind of usually most of these these uh, situations has kind of an altar space, and you can invite them to come up front, and you can say, 
If you need healing in your body for any reason, come to the front. I'm just going to pray over you. Okay. And they'll get up, they'll come to the front and then you, you release that prayer one more time. Okay. Um, you can also have them come to the front and let's say you got to stay on the platform for whatever reason, you know, uh, you know, you can't really move off of it. Uh, you can have them meet with the ministry team member uh, uh, and have the ministry team member uh, be ready for them and pray for them as they come up. Okay, those of you in the room, you got a digestive issue. Uh, these three people are, are going to lay hands on you and, and command your body to be whole. Meet these three people up at front here and you can just call them up and have them meet them and you can do your thing uh, that you need to do back on the platform. Uh, you can also, this would be my last point for healing. A spontaneous flow of healing. You can have them come to the front, those who need healing or a specific thing. Uh, I'm working, I'm right now, I'm just calling out digestive orders. You can have those with digestive orders come to the front and I can guarantee there's going to be, you know, a, a group of people that are going to come to the front and you say, stand in the line and you can actually hop off that platform, or hop, hop off that front space and actually begin to lay hands on them because, you know, the Bible says if you believe in Jesus, you'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover, okay? And so if, if Jesus said you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, then you can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So you just do that and you just release the healing anointing upon them by laying a hand on their, their shoulder, their arm, uh, you know, their head. Uh, sometimes you can have, have the person, you know, put their hands on their stomach and then you can lay your hand on their hand on the stomach okay so this is this is these are several ways that you can administer the flow the supernatural flow of healing you feel like the holy spirit wants to heal people physically okay and you know depending on what your situation is sometimes in my church we we don't have as much time as maybe uh, i would like to have to to do this and so i got to get creative so i'm going to do a general invitation i've got like two minutes to actually, you know, pray that prayer. Okay, anybody in the room needs healing, raise your hand. And I'm going to pray right there, and then I'm going to move on. Um, sometimes I have more time. I might actually bring them to the front, and I'll do a healing line. Okay, so those are some different ways that you can administer in a natural, a supernaturally natural way. Okay, and, and you know, different ways that you can, you can administer that flow. Okay, the second thing is, let's say, you feel like the Holy Spirit wants to move in a prophetic unction, a prophetic way, a prophetic word, um, and that can look a lot of different ways. I know for myself, before I ever minister, um, uh, you know, if I know that I've got a window of time and I'm going to be given a little bit of time, I will go to the Holy Spirit and I will do some, some work with Him prior to. Now, you don't always get that luxury, okay? But if you can, be ready. Have prophetic words ready. R write them down. Um, I call it having one in the pocket at all times. You always want to have a prophetic word in the pocket in the event that you you are suddenly uh, put in front of people and and called upon a minister, uh, you know, in, in front of people. Okay, so if you know that that's going to happen to you on a regular basis, you need to have one in the pocket, right? Um, or you know that you're going to be ministering. Uh, then, you know, you, you've been you've been told you've been given a window of time and you're going to be the minister um, or you've got the whole service and and you sense that the Holy Spirit wants to minister prophetically. Because I'm going to tell you, every time you minister, there needs to be miracles. There needs to be signs and wonders and there needs to be miracles every time you minister in every context in some way, shape or form. OK, and so prophetic words. Again, depending on your, your who you're standing from, some people don't even believe in prophetic words. Um, so you're going to have to verbalize it different. The Lord put a scripture on my heart that I believe is for you today. Okay, you're prophesying, all right? But you didn't use the word prophetic word, all right? You just kind of moved it into a different format. And, and you know, you essentially you prophesied or whether you released the word, you used to say prophecy, okay? Because some congregations don't like that. But for those who are in congregations, they love the prophetic. Say, the Lord gives me a prophetic word for you. Um, have it ready if you can. And then what you want to do is you want to be very clear who the prophetic word is for. Is it for a specific person, um, a group of people? Is it for the whole room? So it could be like, like this. Um, uh, uh, you in the back um, with the blue shirt, dark hair, 
um, I, uh, this word I believe is for you. Or it can be for all of the men in the room. And I've had words like that for every man in the room. Uh, the Holy Spirit is saying X, Y, Z. Um, you, could, you could take it a step further. Let's say you really sense the anointing. You can have people stand up. Um, and you can give them the word. You can have them come to the front of the room You can and give the word. Uh, you can make it a specific person, you know, like, you know, for sure. It's like this person the Lord's going to be speaking to. Sometimes I'll get names um, before, beforehand and I'll write the name down. And, um, you know, it always, it always, they're always in that room. You know, I think the last time I was, uh, had a name, it was someone named Janet and there was just one Janet in the room. And so Janet came to the front and I didn't have time to even minister to her. So I said, meet me in the front, uh, sit, sit, sit in the seat. And then, um, I'll talk to you in just a minute. I didn't have time to minister to her cause our service was moving. And so I, I, she came to the front and our worship started back up. And so I just ministered to her right there, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, gave her the prophetic word. But that was, I just called her to the front, um, you know, and I didn't have, I didn't have room to have her stand up and do the big thing. Uh, so I just did it that way. Sometimes you can have them stand up and do it a little bit bigger. Other times you can have them to come to the front of the room or a group of people come to the front of the room. Like I said, I got a, I got a, a word um, when I was in, in Texas and it was for all the men. And I said, I need the men in the room to come to the front. And this is what God is saying to you. And then I had their, their pastor come up and join me because kind of awkward. I had the pastor come up and join me. I said, okay, pastor, this is, this is the word that God is saying over the men. And he, he confirmed it. He said, yeah, we're actually going to be teaching about that next week. So, so, you know, I had them all come to the front of the room, all to the front. Okay. So there's some different ways. Um, that you can minister that prophetic word. But I always think it's best if you can prepare ahead of time and have it prepared. Now, deliverance. This is interesting. The Holy Spirit speaks to you that he wants to do work of deliverance. He wants to set people free from bondage. Luke 4, anointing. The anointing that, that heals the brokenhearted and sets the captives free. Okay, that's coming. That's come upon you. That's, come, that's something the Holy Spirit's doing and you, and you know he is. Okay, so again... If you can, this is one you could be prepared ahead of time um, and know what he's going to be doing, or you might just know it in the moment. Um, a lot of times I'll get in an atmosphere and I can sense things in the atmosphere or I'll dream it out the night before. Um, but let's say you don't have any of that. Um, you know, you just know that's what he wants to do. Um, you know, one way that you can do that. And again, this is the context of you are standing in front of people. Um, you've been given like a window of ministry. And, and you want to flow supernaturally, but you want it to look natural. All right. So you sense deliverance. He wants to deliver it, deliver. Well, what does he want to deliver? And you, you can feel it. Many times you can feel it. Uh, he wants to address depression or he wants to address marriage strife or he wants to address grief. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and call it out. But again, you want to pull people out of it and and uh over it okay don't leave them in that that um spin a depression or grief okay for example you call it depression all of a sudden people start crying and weeping and going into you know manifesting depression right in front of you okay so you're going to cast it out you're going to command it to go or you're going to break it off in jesus name but if you if you remove something you got to release something remember that Whenever you remove something, you got to release something. So I break the spirit of depression off of, off of um, these people in the name of Jesus. And it could be like you just sense it in the room. I don't, and you'll say that. I'm not sure who this is for. I feel uh, there are some people in this room that are struggling with depression. And it, is, it has been really a, a weight to you. But the Holy Spirit's going to set you free. And I'm going to pray. And so, Holy Spirit, I just, I just thank you for that anointing that sets the captives free. And in the name of Jesus, I break depression off of your people now. And I release the joy of the Lord. Okay, I release um, uh, the, 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 the joy and, and joyful gladness, the anointing oil, the anointing of um, the, the oil of joy, uh, the joy and the gladness in the room in Jesus name. Okay, so you just kind of like work that through. And so you can you can call it out over the whole room. 
Um, you can have people raise their hands if that happens to fit their situation uh, and keep them in their seats. You can have them come to the front and you can just pray generally over them and just stay on the platform. They can stay in the front. You can actually get off the platform and lay your hands on them uh, and break depression, release joy in the name of Jesus. You could start the prayer on the platform and then finalize it on the floor. Okay, so I'm going to break depression off, off of you and I'm, I'm on the platform. Now I'm going to hop onto the floor and I'm going to release the joy of the Lord, okay, on them. i put my hands on them. Uh, so there's different ways, okay? So did you get that? Did you see what I'm doing? Talk to the whole room. Talk to people, maybe in their seats. Either have them come to the front, um, pray over them generally, pray over them specifically, uh, you know, have things prepared, okay? And if you kind of understand just these little things, have these little things, you know, in the back of your mind that these are some ways that I can minister uh, the supernatural in a natural way, then you'll you'll feel like it's it's smooth. You'll feel like you can go in and you feel like you know how to come out. Okay, and again, you're looking at what's my context, what kind of church am I in, what kind of um, event am I in, uh, how much time have I been given, and you can kind of work all of this depending on all of those little nuances, um, you know, that we all encounter uh, in different contexts, okay? So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you in learning uh, how to flow, how spontaneous flow, um, but, but also doing it in a way where it, it looks natural to you, you know, it's supernatural, miracles are happening, but it flows, it's, it's in a natural way, okay? Um, and again, these are the topics that we tackle in the Excellence in the Supernatural Online Mentorship.